all gigafactories after seven months of progress and some extra metrics by which to measure them. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. This is the fourth of these side-by-side, side-by-side comparisons, and you can see them on the screen and in the links in the descriptions below, but I've gotten some heat for only going by groundbreaking instead of using other metrics like first footings or first vertical columns. So those are included this time as well. Stick around until the end to see them all. Seven months since groundbreaking. Now, yeah, this one's gotten me a lot of grief. Groundbreaking isn't fair. We need to consider other milestones like foundations or steelwork. And I mean, those are all fair complaints. So in this video, we'll address those as well. Look at the timestamps to see just those milestone comparisons or hang out with me for a couple minutes because they're coming up quick. Seven months in Shanghai made the phase one factory all but complete. Most of the walls were up, all of the roofs and interior work had already not just begun, but it was well underway. There was a lot of exterior paving completed, and despite all the construction garbage around the site, it was looking pretty solid. At this point in Shanghai, they were about three months from trial production, and the site was looking ridiculously close to finished. Remember that this is a substantially smaller factory than either Berlin or Austin. Berlin had their detached motor works building almost complete and about a third of their main building up in skeleton form. Some walls, many roofed over areas, and a lot more vertical columns waiting for the next step. A lot of their construction used concrete instead of steel, which is heavier and a lot more work to install, but it was made easier by having their own dedicated railway stub to bring in teratons of material at one shot. There are upstream logistical challenges to this approach since trains can arrive daily with a couple extra pieces as needed, but by all appearances, they handled it masterfully. In Texas, the largest of the three projects by far, the pace is going really well. Not nearly as close to complete as Shanghai by any means, but a bit ahead of Berlin. Berlin did have the double whammy slowdowns of hibernating bats and the pandemic to contend with, but they were still positively kicking ass. There's still a lot left to be done in Texas, but the total footprint of the building is greater than Berlin at their seven month mark and bigger than Shanghai's total phase one footprint as well. I made a video recently comparing the three sites visually in terms of their size, so check that out in the description if you wanna see how truly different the three are. Well, these are apples to oranges since they each face different delays and you can't compare them, except that you can. I mean, they're all round fruits and they all go well in a fruit salad, but I've taken the advice of commenters on previous videos and came up with additional ways to measure it. Since Texas required so much land remediation in filling valleys and flattening hills, some have suggested that groundbreaking isn't the best yardstick for progress, so let's look at the progress since first footings. Giga Texas had their first footings visible on day 68, about five months ago. Shanghai hit that landmark at the end of March 2019, and Berlin hit that point at the end of May 2020. If we're going by days from first footing plus five months, Shanghai is a month ahead and essentially done. Berlin is substantially ahead of where Giga Texas was, with about 65% of the building's shell complete. and. Maybe this isn't the fairer comparison, so let's do it one more way. But first, a quick thank you to my Patreons who get bonus content, early access, and help me keep the channel running for just a buck a month. And if that's too much, I get it. You can still help me out by subscribing, so YouTube knows to share this with others who will find it interesting. And I thank you guys so much. So let's look at it based on the first vertical columns. That would be day 87 in Texas, about four months ago. And what a screaming ton of progress Texas has made since we first spied that adorable four-pillar gazebo. In Shanghai, it was also in March of 2019, and in Berlin, it was the 1st of July, 2020. The unfair bit here is that in Shanghai, everything happened all at once. Texas and Berlin placed test structures first, which caused delays, but the 
pile-driven marsh in Shanghai was more predictable. So let's see how that plays out. Shanghai has rolled back by a month since there wasn't any delay between the footings and the columns going in. And again, just three months from trial production. We've seen a lot of what Texas looks like, but here you can see Berlin is a bit ahead by percentage, though not by total footprint. That's no discredit to Berlin, since there's a space limit to how many crews you can pack together, nor a discredit to Texas, which is significantly larger. Shanghai, by this and every metric, is the clear speed winner. Though again, with the smallest of the three factories by kind of a lot. It had the smallest footprint, the lowest amount of multi-floor areas, and the lowest roof height of all three factories. Maybe a fair way to rank it would be to say that Shanghai was the closest to production, Berlin was ahead of Shanghai on both scale and complexity, and Texas, the least complete by percentage, has the most construction actually done, regardless of the other factors. But I want to know what you think. Which factory is actually the leader and why? Is there some metric I should be taking into account that isn't reflected here? What have I missed or misunderstood? Let's get a conversation going in the comments so that when the eight month comparison comes around, we've got an even better base of information to work with on the next analysis. So stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots as we work our way closer to the thaw of spring and the hopes of a Cybertruck revolution.